this this has received enough um, coverage now so that everybody is aware of what this technology is it actually began with this all this work that i showed you in the past about fn cas9 being very specific and uh, kind of culminated last uh, last week when somebody put up this uh, you know news article uh, which talks uh, and and compares feluda um uh, to to you know shomitra chatterjee's iconic role of course he passed away very very dear character to almost everybody of us i mean it's it's very very humbling experience to see such such kind of uh, comparisons but it's also you know something that is a bit exaggerated because um uh, like i said that you know as scientists we we generally make very very incremental advances and we in this case also would like to believe that we have only made an incremental advance more than anything else um and there are a lot of people uh, who are really working hard to bring in uh, better and better technologies and the sum total of all these technologies is what uh what drives uh, science uh, further but i'll tell you a little bit about how feluda works and of course this uh, work and almost everything that we have done uh, in the past is with uh, with dr shobik who is almost uh, uh you know intimately connected with the whole process uh we share a big lab together with a lot of students and uh, the 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 principle of feluda is that you know we um the the acronym of course is fn cas9 editor linked uniform detection assay and it works on the principle that cas9 this particular cas9 fn cas9 is highly specific in recognizing its target and if you introduce uh, very specific mismatches in the in the guide rna then you can direct this cas to get evicted from its target and this way you can um, you know principally distinguish between a target and an, uh, and and another target which has got a point mismatch such as let's say mendelian disorders and we can have different modes of readout for that um uh, it could be in the form of a gel or a electrophoresis or a fluorescence readout um or in the form of a very simple lateral flow assay which i'm going to show in the next uh, few slides and um, just uh, before the the pandemic hit we were kind of testing all these things in the in the field um uh, where you can see dr shobik there in one of the uh, on the on the top uh, top picture um and sickle cell anemia like uh, like i already told you we are we are very uh, passionate about you know uh, finding ways to not only cure but also up obtain ways by which we can diagnose this better uh, and currently you know there is a very crude test that is being done by the government uh, it's called the solubility test where you simply look at the coagulation properties of blood um it doesn't is not accurate uh, and it requires further validations uh and uh, you know such kind of camps are very very common so this is a camp in uh, in chatisgarh in raipur um where ch school children in a tertiary care center which is basically the school are coming in here queuing up to to give their blood and uh, one of them this little girl who doesn't have slippers on is actually looking very curiously at the prospect of having her her uh, you know uh, finger pricked and i can tell you that uh, you know she doesn't seem to be very thrilled about it so we we had been thinking about ways by which we can make this entire experience uh, uh, more uh, enjoyable uh, and more importantly to 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 uh, not deter people from coming in and giving their samples so uh, you know this is uh, rhythm who is one of the uh, the students who is connected uh, very very closely with the feluda experiment she is actually um, you know taking the saliva samples where the uh, where the uh, where the child is asked to spit into the tube and uh, the tube contains a buffer which basically lyses open the cells and the dna is out it's uh, straight from the textbooks of maniotis and um, and you can then do a feluda reaction on this within uh, within an hour you can even make that shorter with isothermal pcr and so on so this was where where we were um, you know trying to come out with solutions for sickle cell anemia at the beginning of the year and of course then covid struck and everything uh, changed so we realized that we could very quickly convert all this into uh, a, an assay for covid-19 which specifically involves taking saliva samples or uh, swabs Uh, doing something called rt pcr not to be confused with uh, real time but reverse transcription pcr uh, and adding biotin primers and then combining this paper strip chemistry with the cas9 biology to give a readout which would uh, then have two bands or a single band uh, based on which you can detect whether a, a, a sample is negative or positive and this was work uh, done in the lab uh, uh, so 
there was uh, there where where we tried to take a commercial strip and uh, you know we have this strip coated with antibody conjugated gold nanoparticles and azhar who has uh, since left uh, the lab and has joined uh, uh, the the partner who is who is bringing this to market tata medical and diagnostics actually figured out you know what would be the right overlap uh, between the guides um, the tracer rna and the cr rna sequences so that this works uh, very robustly and gives rise to a signal in the end where uh, there would be a single line for a negative control which is the control band uh, which comes up in every strip and there would be another line which would be the test band which uh, tells if the sample is positive uh, due to the deposition of biotinylated dna at a streptavidin line and uh, you know i am speaking for isa kolkata so i don't have to introduce uh, feluda without topsha and jotayu because um, they are quintessential figures uh, uh, which you know have to go together so we couldn't have published a manuscript with just feluda it's um, sacrilege so feluda has uh, topsha which is basically true outcome predicted from strip evaluation which is a smartphone app developed with um, aduvo uh, bala and gitanjali's group uh, and uh, basically takes a picture and then it has been uh, machine language trained uh, to give a readout and of course asgar who has uh, developed a, a web tool uh to to take inputs as a signal uh, you know sequence uh for a feluda experiment so you can you can give any dna sequence of uh, that you want to develop a feluda test against not just covid but any any uh, you know uh, snps or whatever it is and then this uh, particular uh, app or uh, let's say let this particular program will will give you the the right design for these uh won't go into details but basically it's supposed to be um at the lab level the 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 consumable costs are way lower and the time is also uh quite low and we we can actually develop a one pot rtrpf in the reaction using isothermal pcr where the need for the pcr machine uh is also gone and i think there are a lot of people uh, manoj dia uh, and now sneha who is who is working on on trying to uh, you know there are certain lessons that we learned as we move from an idea to a product i think that is that is probably the biggest lesson for me um uh, since i had never seen such a such kind of uh, what 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 it takes to go end to end from from a from from the lab what you see in the lab to what you get into in the form of a product and of course uh, you know it has garnered a lot of um, of media coverage and recently um, the icmr and the dcj actually approved it for a use what is very important to note here is that they actually uh, uh, gave it the approval to be a confirmatory test so one who does this test does not require a qrt pcr approval which was uh, quite remarkable uh, coming for a new crispr test and in fact um, it's something new uh, if you look also at the global uh, the global scheme of things and this is roughly you know a kind of timeline we we looked at it in um, thought about making feluda for cov sars co cov2 in 28th of uh, of january and uh, of course on september the dcgi market release happened and i'm i'm told that in december starting with delhi uh, kolkata would also get their first uh, feluda kits for uh, for um, uh, you know testing and uh, uh, just to give you a uh, you know uh, proof that this is not i'm not uh, not uh, joking about this this was a group that we formed in january 28 um, that's before the first this uh, individual was actually was detected in india and that's that's what we see over here i think it was prasad's uh, article uh, which said that no novel coronavirus cases in india so far from the health ministry and uh, we moved on to uh, to getting this uh, thing approved in uh, on uh, in september and then of course uh, this whole process um, is has been a learning curve not only because we needed to make the science very robust that was at the at the you know behind it but more importantly uh, along with the science uh, there was a lot of different things that we began to uh, have to to let's say in some cases i would use the term fight in some cases i would use the term to learn and so on one of these things is that you know how do scientists and corporates speak and uh, you know corporates such as the one who actually brings the the mark the technology to market would need uh, things which are which are developed in time which are you know market driven which would have a lot of lot of scope for business 
um, which oftentimes is uh, needs a Google Translate, uh, you know, to to get um, to get uh, to be to be understood at the at the scientific end. We thankfully had a had a, have a director uh, who happened to be the the mediator uh, in in such kind of meetings, and uh, and we learned over thousands and thousands of experiments um, that you know a lot of different things matter, um, of, you know, ranging from all the, the the quality of the reagents that we use. To understanding what are the problems with the current gold standard QPCR, I'm sure in ISA Kolkata also you have QPCR to be used uh, is, uh, as used as the as the test um, general the, the basic way by which you are testing uh, SARS-CoV-2. And we also realize what are the limitations uh, in using that. And when you compare everything with the QPCR, how that also skews the numbers um, uh, drastically. Of course, the second thing that uh, that I learned is that you know our students are definitely our biggest asset because they are the ones who actually work. So just like you mentioned uh, in the beginning, Shushnato, uh, there were a lot of people who actually stayed back um, during this entire pandemic period and contributed to developing Feluda, and uh, you know sometimes working day and night to make sure that what works in the lab actually works in the hands of a consumer every single time i think that is where uh, the the probably the, the the success of this entire process uh, comes in so they are definitely our biggest asset um of course you know the, yeah, you, you like like you know as they say that raising a child requires a village but if if you want to bring a product to market it actually requires the whole organization in this case uh, at the level of igib from the person who is uh, waiting at the gate uh, which is the which are the guards uh, to the to the director's office everybody contributed uh, in fact the the people at the gates um, several of them have turned covid positive including our students as well um, due to the you know being there all the time to be being there you know trying to um, make sure that everything was uh, was happening as planned the logistics were taken care of and so on um, feluda on account of the name uh, has garnered a lot of attention uh, on social media and we realized this at different points i have i have you know kind of slowly started uh, ignoring them at in the beginning it was uh, um, very interesting to see how different types of people exist and um, uh, you know they launch attacks uh, which which still still happen also i should not say but it uh, you know it's, it's also fun to to see that people really take interest in science uh, but also at the same point of time, social media can also make science accessible to people uh, like no one else. Somebody uh, shared this that you know Feluda was trending at position 15 after Sri Krishna and press freedom. That that tells a lot about you know that yes, probably science is progressing to some extent. And when uh, you have Shashi Tharoor using not a single big English word to talk about it, um, that also gives a kind of a different uh, feeling altogether. And finally, you know, uh, pandemic is, of course, the mother of invention. There are inventions that are happening uh, still in the lab. And this is just to show uh, something that the students have actually come up with where you do not need uh, the, the PCR machine or a heating block uh, to do a Feluda reaction, but actually can be done. I just put this here. So you can actually do this in the inside your hand, isothermal PCR, RT, RPA reaction. Um, we're trying to perfect it to the point that you can actually do this uh, at home. We do not know yet if a self-testing kit would be possible um, within the guidelines by FDA and and uh, and DCGI. But yeah, I mean these are these are innovations that are continuously happening as I as I speak in the in the in the lab. So that tells you that you know pandemic also gives rise to these opportunities. And uh, yeah, this is the the acknowledgement side. A lot of different people, a lot of uh, collaborators, and. Uh, uh, big lab, like I said, and I'm 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 always uh, very interested in uh, you know people who would be interested in joining this uh, this work. So if you have your own ideas, if you're interested in joining, please feel free to write to me, and we are uh, generously funded. So with that, I'd like to thank you, and I'll stop sharing my screen here. I would like to start by asking that what came first, like like what came first, the egg or the chicken? I'd like to know what came first, the name or the acronym. FN Cas9 editor linked uniform detection assay or Feluda? <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, I mean this seems to be the most common question I'm getting in different forums. Well, uh, 
you know so the i think there was a question in the chat box i saw somebody pu um, put that you know whether there are other tests uh, similar to feluda there are actually so uh, uh, there are several crispr based tests which are currently being uh, um, at different stages of development uh, at least two of them have got fda eua um, uh, both using uh, cas13 and cas12 systems and uh, yeah, when when these uh, tests came out uh, immediately the, the naming spree started first with sherlock and then detector and then homes and uh, you know when we were developing this we were also imagining that uh, if we had to bring a name we had to we had to think about about an indian detective's name and um, uh, me and my wife we were sitting and, and discussing this you know what could be the the name and i was thinking more bomkesh really and then we realized that uh, you know that's a very heavy name and uh, it's uh, difficult to bring all those uh, acronyms together and and um, you know since we had f and f you know fn cas9 was all, always there so it took 5 minutes to come up with that um and uh, you know topshe and jatayu were much more simpler because they just simply worked you know we could we could come up with that later on yeah, the, the naming is, uh, is is really interesting because we have had episodes where uh, you know from the highest offices in the country we have been asked you know to think about uh, you know names alternate names etc cetera, etc cetera. but the naming does does matter in this case i would say yeah uh, of course it does like like even if it was bomb case or be it fellow them and they they are both thinking individuals who act first and from your slides i got to know that you started to conceptualize this idea back in january 28 and you had a working prototype by the first week of march even when we did not go into the lockdown in our country so i would like all of us to appreciate that you have worked really fast up fast on this like that needs to be appreciated and i'd like to clarify one thing you said that you believe that iza kolkata is also doing qrt pcr based tests on campus but it's i'm sorry to say that iza kolkata is doing no tests at all oh okay okay that's that's uh, so so but there is some kind of a testing regimen no it's uh, is it not uh, not uh, mandatory the test means testing facilities in iza is a problem right now like uh, there are not enough tests and there was some collaboration with jnm like iser has donated its qrt in the real time pcr machine to jnm hospital kollani who are doing the tests there and that's how it's being done right now okay okay and there's one more question from biplob shaha who is asking what is the role of streptavid in protein in feluda test and why have you chosen only this protein uh it's purely to make it um, how to say yeah, to make it work with the commercial strips it's not necessary to have streptavidin but the commercial strip actually has a streptavidin line uh and because there is not much time here to do the engineering and chemistry ourselves so we went ahead with what is already there so our um, biotin is there in our dna fragments and this interacts with the streptavidin mm -hmm. and causes a uh, accumulation of nanoparticles giving rise to the signal so that's how the current chemistry works but of course uh, there is no hard and fast rule to say that that has to be the only way to do it i had a technical question regarding feluda uh, so i mean how does it compare as far as accuracy or sensitivity with the current i mean the main uh, the mainstay market tests like the rt pcr or the antigen test that that are available Yeah so uh, I mean this has now been uh, you know teased back and forth in multiple levels uh, so I can tell you the figures from the DCGI in their tests uh, was something close to 96% sensitivity and 98% specificity this was uh, when they did the the, the evaluations uh, in our hands uh, we go anywhere between 97 to 100% sensitivity on good days um, because you know always one has to remember these values are uh, relative sensitivity and specificity are simply numbers which you tend to use some kind of a relative measurement in this case it is the quantitative real time pcr uh, test and when the the market is flooded with the different types of quantitative real time pcr kits with varying sensitivities uh, the actual value of a new test in terms of sensitivity specificity is very difficult to determine accurately so i would rather say a range is much better than putting a number so in general anything which is around 95% uh, by fda uh, uh, guidelines is as good as a perfect test 
um right. and uh, like i said even in our hands qrt pcr tests uh, uh, do not seem to be gold anymore so they you, you know if you sequence them some of the the negative samples turn out to be positive if you do a genome sequencing or a viral rna sequencing so so ra- round about uh, greater than 95% is what i would would say antigen tests of course are not because the the very premise basic premise of an antigen test is that it is trying to detect proteins and um, right. when you try to detect proteins you your sensitivity of your device totally determines how many proteins you can capture since there is no amplification happening so anywhere between 50% to 70% sensitivity is what the current antigen tests are are giving in the sero surveys okay thank you because we are talking about testing uh, i would like to know about your opinions on the testing facilities that we have in our country and do you think that are we doing enough to combat this pandemic uh if we did enough then we would have <laughs> probably better numbers i know there is a group of people who probably are anti testers uh, in uh, what they think and feel um and they try to put rationalized arguments about you know why we do not need testing and so on um i don't think so this is very very scientifically um, uh, justified uh, since the numbers prove otherwise um purely from the point of view that uh, the number of spreading the, the number of spreaders that you can uh, uh, detect isolate uh, and quarantine uh, would would also you know reflect on the total number of cases is in a population uh, so therefore testing definitely has to be ramped up uh, question is that you know how what, how do you get tested if you are asymptomatic uh, because you generally do not then get tested whereas um, a large number of patients seems to be asymptomatic we we see it on a regular basis here uh, so this means that uh, we we probably would need uh, uh, we we probably need need to know how to to make this even more uh, Uh, more common place the testing becomes more common place um uh, yeah i mean uh, rt pcr is of course has long turnaround times uh, feluda in its present format requires a lab to do uh, we are really working hard to make sure that we can have something which is even closer to home uh, and and i think that is probably the way and i mean it's not just from us but a lot of people are working on developing solutions which can be done more at a at a kind of a home i i think meghali can comment something on how it is happening in igiv it's a kind of a very broad overview not not a very detailed yeah so here in igiv almost every week uh, on mondays so there is a team from dr shridhar's lab who does this uh, rt pcr based testing so people who stay inside the uh, campus in the hostel we are advised to take tests almost whenever it is possible so and everybody like all the staff and everybody ha- are allowed to get their tests done so it happens almost every week more or less and then is really of, course, it, of course it's all, all voluntary and it's all voluntary. part of the of the scientific thing uh, you know because igib is also doing large number of sequencing experiments and so on so um, it's an academic exercise but uh, i think it's a good exercise and we also have uh, sero surveys that are being done regularly as well to make sure how as a IG, in a community the institute is developing um, a, a kind of response to the to the virus as a student of science i would say that is a that is the way to tackle the situation and i am a bit worried about how isa kolkata is dealing with it uh, anyway like i think we do agree that the asymptomatic people do need to be tested which is not at all being done in our country right now so do you think that the feluda test kit after once once we have enough of them in the market uh, testing of asymptomatic people would be considered by the government i think it totally depends on uh, you know the, the so the one of the things that we hope i mean of course the we do not make, make the kits the kit is manufactured by tata medical diagnostics yeah, yeah. they are the ones who will who will distribute it they'll find a way to do the the, the you know how the testing uh, we hope that the timing would uh, would be shortened because currently the reason why testing is not happening enough is because uh, you know there are lot on turn around times uh, there are queues for uh, um, you know submitting a sample and getting a report which often has to do with the number of uh, pooling that qpcr requires as well as the fact that uh, you know the the general qpcr regimen is longer uh, so feluda should be able to bring that down 
is what my uh, my hope is um but like i said that you know uh, it would require even more innovations and and i won't go into details of that but there are people in the lab who are working very hard to try to bring this more point of care so that uh, so that you can possibly do a, a feluda version 1.2 1.5 or whatever it is uh, at your local doctor's office or uh, let's say even at home at some point so that's where uh, i think uh, we really need to take this to in order to make sure that more and more people can can test if i have understood it right that right now there is a need of a normal pcr not rt pcr or normal yes. but of course because it's normal PCR. pcrs are there in labs i mean of course i said is is some place where one can potentially do it but the current kits would not be be as far as i understand would probably be um, you know you know the, the testing will be done in collaboration with with hospitals and and uh, and um, and uh, you know diagnostics and diagnostic and all centers that. basically like uh, the path labs and so on uh so they will not be probably distributed to individuals but uh, let's see what happens in the future when I mean, we are also trying to develop uh, ways by which uh, i mean you know in a pandemic situation everything is uh, has to be ramped up even a production of uh, kits has to be ramped up at tremendous pace uh, to cater to the demands and um, currently the demands are not just from india but from a large number of countries so i think those are the things that ha has to be they are, they are trying to figure out yeah i am sure you have done your done your part in helping the cause thank you uh, i had a question uh, regarding uh, the commercialization of uh, the feluza kit so so I, I if i understood it correctly it's currently been developed by tata now for for selling out uh, for commercial purposes so what what is uh, i mean currently in the the present situation that we have i mean what is the strategy i mean since you would probably need a lot of kits at a very fast amount of time short amount of time rather i mean what what areas or which sec sections of are you guys are, are you planning to target first or how is it what what sort of a strategy are you guys taking so to be very honest um, i probably don't have an answer to that question because it's a it's a uh, it's a business decision uh, by the company and we are not part of that uh, we as inventors uh, uh, we have licensed it uh, and uh, and uh, it's a non exclusive license which means that uh, anybody uh, for that matter can come and take this up that of course is the first one who has come and, and brought this uh, got it cleared so um, i think they have revealed a few of their business uh, plans uh, in their press releases which uh, from what is up there they are bringing this first in uh, delhi on uh, first week of december um uh, that's first of december i think uh, in collaboration with apollo hospitals and then uh, i think they are rolling it out in 10 cities kolkata included um within the next week or two weeks or so and then from there phased out into other cities other cities of india so they have a plan of uh, ramping the production up um, to uh, i think a million maybe but uh, these numbers are, uh, is, is something that i'm 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 i am as much getting this information from the press more than anyone else so i don't have the real uh, information because you said it's a non exclusive license so ideally anyone can come and start producing yeah, yeah, and that would always help so i would like you to comment on how should one go about it if they are at all interested to do so uh so the process is uh, it's a very uh, you know streamlined process in csir where if you have a technology and you uh, put it up for an eoi expression of interest then uh, any interested party can uh, you know contact us through a there is a there is a business development group pdmg uh, in a csir institute and then uh, the bdmg basically invites them uh, to sign a non disclosure agreement uh, after which the technical details are shared and um, then if they are interested then a technology transfer document is prepared uh, with uh, whatever details in that and then uh, you know you can work it work out how that ttd will finally be in terms of uh, you know how the how the product will be validated etc cetera, et cetera. it's a it's a very very streamlined process of how uh, such kind of uh, things happen at least in the csr mode i think that would be a lot of help to a lot of people of once it goes up on our youtube channel it was wonderful to have you with us thank you very much and like you intended to visit isa kolkata some day i also hope that that does happen sometime soon
Yes, we will, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to bring a fellow the kit along, and then we can. Have a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thanks again for the nice, uh, you know, uh, for the for the program and for inviting both of us. Yeah.